I think it's time I finally get this video done on the Fat Bob version of the Memphis Shades Road Warrior. I don't know what my problem's been. I've just kind of had a creative block on this. Um, actually got the Road Warrior back in February. And uh, people keep asking me, when are you gonna do that review? So we're gonna do the review today. Um, I did not record video when I did the install, but I did take photos. So what we'll do is kind of talk through the uh, the install with those photos. Then I've got measurements that I've taken with various size shields um, on the Road Warrior, as well as a comparison uh, with uh, measurements against the Harley Davidson detachable 15 inch windshield. So hopefully that'll give you guys that are interested in this thing enough information to uh, kind of figure out how it's gonna fit and how to size it for your bike. And then lastly, we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the paint job that I had done on it. Which I'm still very happy with. And we'll go over a bit of a trip report from the St. Louis trip, because I had some issues with the, uh, the specific shield that I had on the Road Warrior. So we'll kind of talk through that. And then lastly, uh, Volts kind of did a walk around on the Road Warrior and gave his thoughts on what he thought about it. Uh, Oh my God, I guess it was like two months ago. So we'll kind of end the video with that. So there you go. This could be a little long video, but I know several of you have been asking me about this and when I'm going to get this uh, video out. So here you go, guys. As I said before, when I did the installation of the Road Warrior on the Fat Bob, I didn't actually record a video of that. Uh, they all kind of install the same way on Harleys, so I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to my friend KidMoto22's video that he did on installing the Road Warrior on his uh, Road King Special. Very similar process. Uh, I did, however, take photos through different steps as I was going through the install, so let's talk through that real quick. When you order the Road Warrior, you're going to order two pieces in addition to the shield, but we'll get to the shield later. You're going to order the Road Warrior fairing itself, plus you're going to order the mounting kit. Uh, that's a trigger style mounting kit that makes it very simple to put the, the fairing on and pull it off the, uh, the bike. You can order the kit in either black or chrome. I went with black because, you know, I do everything else in black. And the trigger kit comes with the mounting brackets for the forks the brackets to go uh, on the Road Warrior that'll attach the Road Warrior fairing to the, the uh, mounting brackets. And then they also include the, the tools that you'll need, the hex keys that you'll need to do the installation. The first thing we'll do is to mount the brackets that go to the fairing to the inside of the fairing. You've got four rubber grommets that go inside the four holes on the Road Warrior. And then you're gonna take those brackets and then mount them to the inside of the Road Warrior. Note that the trigger release goes to the top or towards the top of the fairing. When you're done with that, this is how the brackets should look looking from the inside of the fairing. So now we need to prep the bike to put the, uh, the mounting brackets on the forks. The first step in doing that is to remove the, the light cover. If you haven't done that before, it's really simple. Just remove the two screws on the bottom of the, uh, the, the light cover and then pull it up from the bottom and then pull it down from that little tongue and groove connection at the top. So now we're gonna put the fork clamp brackets on, uh, starting with the bottom ones. Notice that these uh, fork clamps, these brackets actually are two pieces. So what you wanna do is to pull the, uh, the inside piece out, the, the, out of the tongue and grooves there. And then we wanna put the clamp around the front fork uh, on the bottom the, with the fat bob, the forks kind of flare out a little bit and these bottom clamps are gonna set right on top of where that starts to flare. They won't go down any further. Uh, once you get that the outer piece in position, then take the inner piece and feed it down through the tongue and grooves and then kind of snug it down. We don't wanna tighten these up just quite yet. So once you get all four on, and again, just kind of snug them where there's a little friction, you can move them up and down. Go ahead and put the light cover back over the light then. You wanna take the Road Warrior and fit the bottom uh, portion over those fork clamps uh, and then 
kind of adjust the upper clamps to where the Road Warrior will latch on to it, level it off, uh, and then you can tighten those clamps down and um, you're good. You're good to go as far as the base unit for the Road Warrior. So at this point, I went ahead and put on my CAF-A shield. Putting a shield on is pretty simple. You'll see a line of, of holes uh, along the Road Warrior. They line up with the holes in the shield and you use little nylon screws that they gave you uh, with the shield. Just make sure you don't tighten those up with tools. Just finger tighten those, uh, otherwise you'll snap them off. But it's real simple to, to install. So at this point, let's take a look at the 15 inch detachable windshield and then we'll show some measurements and how the CAFE shield and the 11 inch shield that I have now stack up against that uh, original detachable shield, give you some idea of how to size these things and tell you what you can expect as far as um, the wind flow and stuff. This is the Harley Davidson 15 inch detachable windshield for the Fat Bob. I took the measurements as far as height from the top of the headlight. So as you can see, this shield is 15 and a half inches tall, and at the widest point, it's 17 inches wide. The airflow around this, once I got my seating position dialed in and had my risers put on to kind of change my seating position a little bit, the, the airflow would hit around the top of my helmet, and I really didn't feel any wind of any sort on my shoulders or on my chest. Uh, however, I really didn't like this shield so much because it, it was very upright, wasn't as aerodynamic as the Road Warrior fairing. So there were times when, um, you know, in windy conditions, I would, would get a little buffeting from the shield itself, but, but nothing from my helmet. Now let's take a look at the CAFE shield. The measurements for the CAFE shield may look a little complicated here, but I'll try to walk through this. So the overall width of the Road Warrior itself at the widest point is 19 inches. Uh, as it tapers up to the top where the shield connects, it's 14 and a half inches wide. Uh, from the top of the headlight to the rim where the windshield actually attaches to the Road Warrior is four inches. So the way that you figure out the height of the windshields is to take the height they advertise the shield and add about four inches to it. Some people say three and a half, but I measured it at four. The CAFE shield itself, there's no measurements on the website, but that shield measures to seven inches flat. So seven and four inches means that from the top of the headlight, that shield is 11 inches as opposed to the 15 and a half inches of the 15 inch detachable Harley windshield, if all that makes sense. The problem I had with the CAFE shield, uh, you, it's, it really kind of slants back quite a bit. It's very aerodynamic, uh, and you will notice the curves on the side uh, come in quite a bit. So what that means is that the airflow was, was very different than the Harley Davidson 15 inch detachable. With this shield, I was getting wind around my nose, I guess, just right around the nose area. Uh, and I had a lot of wind on my shoulders, no wind on my chest. This wasn't that big of a deal until we went to uh, Louisville on that, that trip down to Kentucky. And we got caught in a really, really bad storm. And what happened was, I mean, the storm itself would have been bad enough if I didn't have any fairing but the way the CAFE shield was redirecting the rain that was coming in, uh, it was redirecting it straight into my visor. And, and to be honest, if, if there hadn't been a bridge as close as it was, I probably would have pulled over in the rain and just taken the shield off because I couldn't keep my line of sight clear enough to, to see reliably. I already knew prior to that point that I wanted to swap this out. I actually wanted to swap it out before the trip to, to Louisville and get a, a taller screen, but definitely after experiencing this, I knew I needed to move up to a, a larger screen. Maybe not just for travel either, but maybe permanently. Which leads us to the 11 inch shield that I have now. So the 11 inch shield, again, looking at the measurements, sets on top of that four inch piece on the Road Warrior, meaning that it provides uh, basically a 15 inch shield height. And this one is much better than the, the CAFE shield. I'm, I'm really happy with this one. Because the contour is a little different on the width as you go up to the top and doesn't go in so dramatically or slant back so much, the, um, the wind hits the top of my helmet about where my 15-inch uh, Harley 
windshield did, but it, I have a little more coverage on the width. So I get a little bit of wind on the shoulders, nothing on the chest. Uh, it's definitely a lot more comfortable ride than uh, going down the highway with that cafe shield. And so far since I put this one on, although I originally intended on swapping them back and forth depending on where I was riding, I've just left this on. I like the look. I think the style is a little, little nicer. I like the darker uh, smoke tint to it. And uh, I definitely like not having to worry about the rain getting redirected into my visor. There's also no buffeting whatsoever from the shield itself or uh, with my helmet. So I hope this has helped. I hope the measurements help you a little bit um, as you're looking at different shield options for the Road Warrior. If you've got any questions, let me know. So with all this taken care of, the next thing I needed to really address with the Road Warrior was the fact that it just kind of looked like a big chunk of black plastic. Everyone had told me when I got this that you don't need to paint the Road Warrior. And maybe that's true, but for me, it just looked like a big chunk of black plastic setting on the uh, on the fat bob. And it didn't bother me too much at first, but after a while, I kept looking at it going, man, I got to do something about that. I need to come up with some way to kind of sleek that up a little bit and make it look like it's more integrated with the bike. And with that, my friends out of Harley Davidson of Quantico introduced me to one of their painters, Kevin Pettit. And I went out to his place, sat down, met with him, and kind of talked through what I wanted to accomplish with the paint, with the design, to kind of slim down the bike. I wanted something that, that was different uh, than what I've seen other people do with their, their fairings on their fat bobs and something that, wanted, that made it look more like the fairing was, was part of the bike and kind of streamlined a little bit. So this is what Kevin and I came up with. I'm extremely happy. Kevin does great work. He's... Um, Subsequently done some work for, for other people that I know, and everyone is just really thrilled with the work that he does. I'll put his email address up here in case you want to contact him if you're in the area and want to talk to him about doing some work for you. But at this point, I think I'll let Volts uh, tell you a little bit about what he thinks about where I ended up with the Road Warrior and um, kind of his impressions of how it looks on the bike. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how I had the, uh, the paint done on the fairing and kind of the design but you know instead of me talking about it i was thinking maybe i'd let my buddy volts talk about it volts you want to let everybody know what you think about the fairing sure here you go uh all right so the fairing the way that that dave actually uh came up with the design goes really well with the lines of the existing design of the bike um the paint is not overwhelmingly orange, so the whole thing doesn't look like a big orange blob. There is the same lines from the factory uh, design that Harley has for this particular orange uh, on the fairing, which actually complement really well um, with the fairing with the existing paint job. The kanji, obviously very uh put together very stylishly she uh i like this one better than the uh the, the sticker that you had the sticker was really cool but this looks this looks more seamless and it looks more like it was created for the bike itself yeah he was pretty cool i, I sent him my graphic file from photoshop and he somehow digitized that and painted it the i think the whole fairing looks really looks really cool with the the style of light with the bar style it looks more aggressive than your regular harley and from the from the outside when you're when you're seeing it being ridden um i i think it looks very unique and that's that's what i would say in terms of of how of what you can expect it's, it's very unique and it's not overwhelmingly orange <laughs> It's a, it give, gives it a very menacing look. And if it was all orange or just um, had this, the, the, the black fairing itself uh, as the only black part, it would look completely different. I think this, the lines complement the factory lines perfectly. Uh, overall, I mean, it, it looks gorgeous. It looks really cool. It's a very unique bike and uh, cool. you're a very lucky guy. Thank you very much. And that was my buddy Volt, AKA Walter. And there you have it. Thanks, Volts. Thanks, guys. I apologize again for taking so long to get this out. I know a lot of folks have been messaging me and asking me questions. Hopefully this answers everyone's questions. 
And if not, feel free to hit me up on Instagram or put a comment down below in this video. Really appreciate you guys supporting the channel, subscribing, all that good stuff. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you like content uh, around fat bobs and life in general, please consider hitting the subscribe button and, and ringing the bell. Every little bit of support goes a long way and helps me create content for the channel. You guys have a good one. We're packing up because we're heading out on the road uh, out to the mountains of West Virginia for a long weekend, and we will see you on the road. Peace.